Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Benlow, and I'm joined today with my associate, Sophie Caesar, and we welcome you to PBA, a noon webinar. As life begins to return to a new normal amidst the COVID-19, we need to find a way to ensure we don't find ourselves in a second wave worse than the first one. Our guest today is John Costigan, Managing Director of ECMB Capital Partners, and he will be discussing TraceSafe. The symbol is BCX on the CSE, but there will be a name change and a new symbol coming shortly. This is a health and safety wearable technology that, became, that can be used to enable businesses and governments to get back to work by tracing, tracing COVID cases. Uh, John, welcome to our webinar and please begin whenever you're uh, ready. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for that introduction and thank you everybody for uh, joining us here on, on this webinar. Uh, BCX, uh, also known as Blockchain Holdings, acquired uh, a technology from a company called YSilica uh, back in March. Okay, what we're looking for, TraceSafe has allowed us to develop this. We need a way to, to, to enable businesses and governments to get back to work. That's very simple. <clears throat> so what we were looking at is developing uh, a Bluetooth technology that allows us to do this. <clears throat> to date, uh, the uh, Hong Kong government was looking for, for a quarantine management solution. TraceSafe is able to offer some solutions based on they have a, a government vertical, an enterprise vertical, and sorry, a large sports venue vertical that we're going to get into. So initially, <clears throat> the Hong Kong government was looking for a way to uh, increase, com increase compliance in the manage in management of their quarantine. As you know, everybody that came into Hong Kong had to have a 14-day quarantine and was issued. Uh, <clears throat> what, they was, what was happening is obviously people were going home. They, had a, they initially had a cell phone solution. People would go home and they would quarantine for 14 days, but obviously they game that, leave the cell phone at home and go out. So they were looking for a real good technological solution. Uh, y Silica was in an accelerator in Hong Kong at the time and was developing their technology in terms of quarantine management systems and the Hong Kong government uh, sort of implemented this solution. What this does is when you get into Hong Kong, they put on one of your, the trace safe bracelets put on your hand, you go home. Now, <clears throat> because this is basically a GPS location software, a real-time management solution, uh, you're sent home with the bracelet, it pairs with your cell phone. You can't leave your cell phone home, go out and go to the bar, go, go out for dinner. You can't, it's, it's tamper-proof, so you cannot <clears throat> take the, you can't take it off, you can't stretch it off over your hand, you can't cut it off. If you do so, the management, the people that are managing the software will be alerted be that the health authorities or what have you. Now, every single, we believe every single port in, in the world needs a solution, a quarantine management solution as people from overseas come in. In Canada, for example, if, if I come into Vancouver here, I mean, I, I'm told to go home for 14 days, I'm quarantined for 14 days, uh, what do they do? They phone me, they phone me twice and have sort of police visits. What they've shown in Hong Kong is that the compliance for quarantine management improved over 90% by implementing this type of solution. So you, be, uh, and in, in Vancouver, for example, there was 2,500 people came in in the last three weeks and 600 of them just went, uh, went to the bar, went home before they decided to have the management. This is obviously not what we need to do. We've, uh, they've, they've scaled this, this Hong Kong started ordering these back in January. Kuwait is now on board. Uh, we sold over, I believe it, over 100,000 wristbands. So the, the Y Silica guys, obviously, we have, <clears throat> they have development engineers in, uh, in India, uh, and Silicon Valley, uh, Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, this quarantine software management solution that allows the health authorities to, to ensure that there's quarantine management compliance is in front of 26 countries right now. Uh, we are the only ones we believe that can actually offer this at scale. I mean, they asked, you know, we scaled up to 100,000 wristbands within a matter of weeks. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the port authorities, this is a disposable hypoallergenic. You can see the wristband here. Very simple solution. It's low cost. 
In order to implement it, <clears throat> you don't need complicated, complicated IT architecture. Uh, <clears throat> TraceSafe can offer the enterprise software that will, management, that will manage the data based on that, management the alert systems, so on. It's a very flexible cloud-based system, but what we see is the real opportunity. That, that's a very small opportunity in terms of government vertical, but I think the real, the real value in TraceSafe is allowing us to safely open up large-scale venues, obviously concerts, uh, sporting events. Uh, take, if you think about uh, enterprise software in terms of, for example, the construction industry in Singapore has mandated that they will need a contact tracing solution Contact tracing right now, the state of contact tracing right now is such that, uh, for example, in the United States of America, there's 400,000 contact tracers. It takes a lot of time. You have to interview everybody one by one. If there's an event in a, in a, anywhere in society, they will bring you aside. If the contacted person or the, the person who contracts the disease will be interviewed by the contact tracer, and he'll have to remember, he or she will have to remember where they've been for the last two weeks. This software allows us to, to stem the spread of COVID-19 or any viral disease down the road. <clears throat> Let's say you're at work, you, you don't present with any symptoms, you go home, you get sick. Now, we want to contact everybody that you've been in contact with. TraceSafe, because it's a Bluetooth and it basically is a relative positioning technology that allows us to give a snapshot within a venue that everybody has allows us to see who's been within six meters of you and for how long. Now, how does this differ from apps? There's a ton of apps. Everybody and his brother has released an app for contact tracing. This does not rely on cell phone technology. It's an independent IT architecture cloud solution that they can provide. So, um, <clears throat> Again, one of the first applications we're looking at is, is Singapore has mandated, for example, within, um, within the construction industry, obviously when you go into a construction site, you cannot, you can't take cell phones and there's really no IT architecture to manage this. Well, TraceSafe has a solution for that and in terms it can deploy within there. Again, it's not cell phone based, it's Bluetooth. You merely set up beacons within the, within the, within the construction site. And we can monitor with, if you're within six feet of anyone, it will alert you, we will process all the data. So the trace safe solution, it only operates within those venues where you can scan in and scan out or in the terms of, in terms of large scale sporting events, uh, they will integrate that within, uh, within your sports bracelet and issue you, and it can be issued as a, as a bracelet, it could be issued as a, a beacon inside your hard hat, be issued as a, a lapel pin. There's a lot of form factors that we can use to deploy this thing throughout any, the enterprise software system. Well, this is well, how this is monetized is very, very interesting. I mean, we have a, a SaaS solution as well as a disposable hardware that comes with it. For example, the SaaS solution is basically the cloud software and it's very, very it's been battle tested within the medical space when it was doing the baby monitoring. It's also, so it's, it's been, there's all kinds of privacy issues around uh, in the hospital setting. So it really is a privacy first technology. Uh, the, the software can be set up there to manage the software either within the cloud or without the cloud, depending on the enterprise interest. It basically, well, you see the numbers here in front of you. We can charge up to 250000 for an independent cloud-based management system, sort of mesh network. Or if you want to use the cloud, that's a $50,000 one-time fee. The Wolfpack installation will include both enterprise software and the, the disposable. So there's a recurring fee for the software, and of course, there's a price on the disposables. Disposable bracelets, uh, of course, in COVID are very important. Uh, but they, they will, it's a low cost solution for anyone who wishes to open up and be able to utilize contact tracing quickly and safely. Again, we just talk about this as a medical grade encryption technology that doesn't rely on cell phones. 
So your safety is protected because there's no personal information that's downloaded to your bracelet. Uh, there's no, if you, when you get alerted, for example, if somebody should come down with COVID-19 and they just gone to the Montreal Forum, I think you have 30,000 people there. So how do we contact 30,000 people and who do we contact? Well, if you were at the game and somebody got sick and reported that three days later, contact tracers have to go and figure out who that person was in contact with, what vendors were, were, were in contact with that person. TraceSafe allows you, with, if this data system is installed, uh, it allows you to quickly isolate and contact those people that came within six feet of that person for 30, 40 seconds. Then if you just pass that person on, you know, as you're walking through the beer gardens, no problem. However, it also will, it will alert you if you don't. If you're not in contact and you, you've, you've heard that somebody got COVID-19 at the game, um, you will get an alert that says you have nothing to worry about. But if you were in contact, they will also say, you were in contact with this person for 30 seconds. Perhaps you should go get tested. The importance of it being a medical grade technology, this from these guys from Y Silica have been doing this for eight years. So they're way ahead of the curve in terms of providing a very robust solution to, to, to large scale venues. We're talking at large scale venues and enterprise. Where it's deployed right now, as I said before, the trace safe technology in front of 26 countries. Those are mostly government, but uh, with the hire of Gord Zilstra, who is like the number 15 employee at monster.com, they are looking at sort of rolling this out to the corporate departments. His target will be sort of HR departments in terms of how do we open up offices safely? What solution can we provide to the healthcare authorities that will show that if there's an outbreak, of any viral outbreak, how do we control that? <clears throat> how do we limit its spread uh, and, and, and protect privacy? So that's a real big issue, obviously. TraceSafe will be hiring a, a privacy officer, officer down the road um, in order to deal with, there's a variety of different legislations all across the globe. Uh, they have, right now, there is, there's an unlimited demand for this product, both in the quarantine space, the enterprise space, and of course, the large venue space. Uh, Dennis Kwan is the CEO of, of TraceSafe. Again, as Paul suggested, we will be changing the name to TraceSafe. He's got 10 years experience. You can see here that he's got over 20 patents. The company itself has six patents. Uh, there are patenting, there's patent pendings as this is rolled out across the globe. Uh, Every situation is a little bit different. Obviously, the patents are such that, I mean, the deployment of the Bluetooth technology here, I mean, we haven't even seen some of the uh, sort of the case scenarios. Uh, he was uh, sort of the leader in one of the first uh, wearables and Bluetooth technology, and they had some really big exits. As you can see here, Transilica was acquired for $160 million. Uh, Dennis, it, I mean, very, very deep technology experience. If we go back to why BCX uh, was looking at, at, uh, at TraceSafe, they had deep, deep engineering experience. Lots of, I mean, they had engineering solutions, they had very robust technology, but they really did not have a marketing strategy. And again, there was this breakout product that sort of hit while even the accelerator in Hong Kong, and the rest is history. So they're paying catch up right now in terms of marketing this as, as they roll this out. Suresh is based in India. So India looks like it's very interested in this technology as well. As, as it relates to uh, sort of North American pricing will be differentiated from uh, sort of different, uh, from India pricing will be a lot lower. We'd be able to manage that, but the volume will be a lot higher. Gord Zilstra is a dynamite salesman. SAP is probably the largest uh, enterprise software company in the world, and he's scaled within that. His company was bought by SAP. Uh, again, he was the number 15 employee at monster.com. Uh, and he, within six days of the deal with um, 
the deal with the wolf pack was done in six days. So, and that pretty much Gordon was, Gordon was pretty, pretty strongly behind that. Bob Hunter of the wolf pack, which just acquired the technology uh, in order to open up their stadium and sports stadiums is obviously the executive CP, the executive VP of, of Maple Leaf sports. So the word is going to get out very quickly that this has applications within the sporting uh, venues. Trey Safe has been in uh, sort of all over the media right now. There's the most recent one. There'll be a CTV interview. Uh, looks today at this time. Unfortunately, the CEO couldn't be with uh, us, and I apologize for for me stepping in at the last minute. And uh, that he's uh, being interviewed by the New York Times uh, in the sports section. But those are free for you to have a look at. I mean, there's some pretty pretty interesting interviews um, and does explain why these wristbands are, are going, we believe going to be a lot more popular. Uh, for example, the Wolfpack in Toronto is a rugby league. The stadium is about 10,000. They're gonna issue these wristbands. They'll, they'll trademark them with the Wolfpack logos. It'll be part of the loyalty program. So it's gonna be integrated and, and, and have a very good I mean, front-facing customer experience. It can show you to your seats. It can allow you access to the VIP rooms. You can use it for e-commerce down the road. And of course, it, it only operates within the venue. So any closed venue is a, basically a closed ecosystem. And if you wanted to get into a concert, they'll issue these bracelets and they'll be able to contact Trace Quisley should there be an outbreak of any viral significance. Within a, a corporation, you can put it in, you scan it in when you enter, you scan it out when you're done, and it never follows you. The only thing it will know in terms of your information would be your cell phone number or your, your email. When you buy a ticket online, you give your email. Sometimes you give your phone number. I don't know if you've been to a restaurant lately to get into the restaurant. They want your contact information. So this will operate the same way. We can use QR codes to... to to, to ensure safety. Um, it's a very, very elegant solution for a lot of people. Uh, here's the share structure. You can take a look at that. They're looking at raising $6 million to $10 million. They have some pretty big lead orders already in place. Uh, within there, there's a lot of payments to Ysilica. They have some pretty interesting and hard, uh, the payments are based on them bringing in enterprise customers, their governments, one of the, and, and we're not talking, these are very, very large customers that we, that we, they need to trigger in order to, to trigger those payments. Um, again, here's the raise. Primarily the, the money will 50% of anything raised is going to be used for sales and marketing. Uh, another 2 million is for uh, the inventory and stock. And apologize for the stumbling, but Again, I wish Wayne was here to tell you the story. My apologies. No Thank worries, you. John. Uh, we'll start with the questions. We have a couple of them. Uh, the first one is, can this be adapted so a person with a band can verify they're immune if checked by an authority? I mean, that's the, the immunity passports or the virus visas, as we're calling them. Absolutely. I mean, but that would be, we can issue that within the medical space. I think that would be a viable other. The thing about the Bluetooth technology wearables is that you could layer in multi-sensors. For example, you could layer in, you can measure, your, you can put biomarkers within these uh, bracelets. You could measure your O2, your, your oxygen. You could measure your heart rate. So if you had employees coming in uh, into your building, you could monitor them in real time. If somebody was having a, a elevated heart rate, perhaps a, a lower oxygen level, that would trigger an alarm and you could inform this person that maybe this person is sick. Maybe it's, you know, maybe they have COVID-19. So it can, you're, I think the question is around generating QR codes so that would allow you to, to pass in and out. There, there wouldn't be any issue. That would be very a simple adoption for this type of technology. Okay, excellent. Um, the next one is, have you, have you been approached by any wearables, example, Garmin, Fitbit, et cetera? Okay, the thing about the wearables is they are very, very expensive solutions. I mean, I think the, the wearable market is huge. Uh, in terms of Fitbit, it's, I, I don't know what the Fitbit is. The last time I looked, it was $199. Uh, 
So we're deploying very specific, measurable, uh, measure, measurable data. For example, all the bracelets that we're issuing right now can be sub $10. So as I said, it's a very low cost and very specific solution. I don't know, no, we have, I mean, Dennis was part of Martian Watches, so he understands the wearable market, but we're going after a very specific market initially. And I, I really wouldn't say that we're in any serious talks. We're, we're interested right now in POs. What we're looking at is getting, getting orders. Uh, so really, no. So here's a good question when we're talking about getting orders. Have you been in contact with the Quebec government or any other governments? The, the problem with the government issuance is around, is around quarantine management. And there's a lot of privacy issues that the Canadian government in particular is having difficulty with. The quarantine management system that's, that we've seen as most successful is that the, the countries, take a look at the countries that you know, are interested in deploying it, Hong Kong, Kuwait, Blue Nine, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Singapore. So they have a different democratic structure in terms of how they deploy these things and how quickly they can. We have a ton of privacy issues. So I would say they're at sort of third generation once we get this deployed in other governments. So yes, we have this in front of the Canadian government. And you know, I think it's this you know, step, Trudeau has seen this thing. Uh, government by government, the Alberta government, the BC government has seen this thing. Uh, but again, it, there's, it's a bit of a political football for them. So we're focused on in, within the North American market, we're much more interested in the venues. So any kind of closed ecosystem where you can target and ticket everybody within that system and have a complete solution. We don't want to boil the ocean, for example. If every, we've taken a look at everybody, if you, you know, the, the contact tracing apps that the Canadian government has considered and the Quebec government and BC government, um, the download of those apps is somewhere between 21% and 60, 60%. It just doesn't work in terms of people downloading it as a solution. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work in terms of technology. There's all kinds of data transfer issues. It, it, it doesn't work because a lot of people, babies, children, old, they don't wear cell. I mean, there is no cell phone. So I think we've focused on a localized tracing solution and unfortunately, the Canadian North American governments are not really ready for the contact tracing in terms of management, but contact tracing in terms of venues and large scale organizations, you know, people with hundreds, thousands of employees, much more interested. So governments per se uh, in the North American universe, not yet for that. So once we demonstrate, and we've just, this just happened Monday, uh, was the rugby team, you know, signed the contract with us. This is the first of many. I mean, it's certainly in front of a lot of organizations and they're all taking a look at it. But governments, Canadian and North American governments, they'll be a little bit slower on the uptake. It kind of mirrors the way that the virus rolled out, rolled out first in China, you know, so I think the governments will adopt this technology in the same order that the virus sort of rolled out. So here's a good question. Um, who owns the data and what do you say to the people who have the fear of Big Brother following them? Well, here's the thing is that they don't have any personal data. It's like, do you worry about the restaurant having your phone number? Um, so. No. <laughs> so no, you don't. Um, but again, there is no personal data that's stored. Also, the data, contact tracing data is held for 14 days and then it's, and it's removed. Basically, these bans are disposable. In the, in the case of the quarantine management software, after 14 days, the battery dies, it's it, it's over. Unlike being monitored by a cell phone, which you all have in your pocket, or most of you do, it doesn't do it, it doesn't do that. All it is is a way of contacting and alerting somebody who has been in contact with somebody who's gotten sick. Typically, they don't present when they're going into the venue, be it a construction site, a hospital, a residential care facility, uh, a stadium. They look healthy, so but they will develop it later, and that's when we the contact tracing comes into effect. Okay, so uh, we'll just take uh, two or three more questions here. Sure. 
Uh, one of them, um, do you have any debt? No, no debt. Okay, awesome. Who is your competition? The competition, I think, are the countries themselves that are trying to develop their own solutions. Everybody wants to be the first one to develop a vaccine. The U.S. wants to develop the vaccine before China. Um, so what we see is, is co companies coming up with their own. Everybody, you can get a Bluetooth solution, sure. But do you have eight years of experience in battle testing this type of technology? Do you have the cloud management system? I mean, anybody can go, I, you know, I'm going to develop my own server system. But you know what? There's inherent risks in it. There's all sorts of institutional learnings that people don't have. So this is a very mature software. So in a sense, I mean, the apps might look like they're the competition, but they really do not have a comprehensive solution. Uh, because unfortunately, we don't see the uptake, the technology, and or the user base to facilitate an entire solution. Uh, we believe we will have competitors, but currently, as I said, I think it's the government's trying to offer their own sort of patchwork solution. Okay, and uh, last question, sure. uh, which will lead to the future. Um, what application do you perceive for your product beyond uh, COVID-19 after uh, after all, uh, mortality rates are falling and the virus is showing um, yeah. continuation among recently affected. Are you targeting the next pandemic? Well, we're definitely targeting the next pandemic. And as you know, when 9-11 happened, we're still taking our shoes off, you know, at the airport. So some of these solutions will be preventative. They'll be much like an insurance policy against the next pandemic. There's a lot of permanence going to be involved in having a ready-made solution should anything happen. Every port of entry needs a solution, a quarantine management solution. For example, every business, every stadium will need a, to prepare for a solution. We've seen what the cost of not preparing for these things. It's trillions of dollars. These are very simple, robust, low-cost solutions that you can have prepared. Contact, I mean, Bluetooth technology has been used, for example, let's say, I, I mean, for ex you, you, at a con you go to a convention, you, you wear a wristband, it allows you to ex, you know, enter certain areas that you, you know, that you might pay extra for, you go to the seminar, but it also tracks your interest level in terms of positioning. So ad buyers use this all the time. If you're at a concert, it might track you around the, around the venue and see where you spent the most time. You spent the most time at the Chev dealer, not at the Porsche dealer, so they'll target you. So there's, there's advertising potential here. The baby technology, monitoring babies, monitoring you know, uh, senior citizens so they don't wander off and get lost. There, there's certain amounts of that, but I think the pr preparation for and being prepared for the next outbreak is gonna be critical for everybody so we, we think it's a permanent solution. Right now, obviously, there's, we have unbelievable demand for this product. I mean, and that's why we're doing the raises. We, we can't supply the demand currently. But yeah, we believe it will be a permanent solution. And the beauty of it is, is that the SaaS model requires pay, continuous payments while you have this technology in place. The bracelets themselves, the, we could put a battery life out there for a year, but eventually the battery needs to be replaced. So this solution is, is an ongoing revenue for TraceSafe. Well, thank you very much, John. Um, Paul, I'm sure you, as usual, have a question or two for John, and then we can wrap it up. Yep. Just to follow up, John, uh, we're going to let everyone know when you uh, change your symbol, change your name, and you know, change movement to the TSX. So mm -hmm. we'll make sure people are kept up to speed on that. And uh, again, thank you very much. This is a fantastic story. It's very apropos for what we're going through. And I'm uh, very confident you're probably going to get some good traction uh, very soon. So again, thank you very much. We'll keep everybody posted on what's going on. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, John.